Welcome to Item Breakdown, a series where I analyze every single item in Mario Maker 2, go over their properties, and find interesting ways to use them in our own levels. This video is all about the Piranha Plant. I insist you give me the plant. The Piranha Plant is an enemy asset available in every game style, though its behavior and properties vary between them. Typically, a Piranha Plant is stationary. It stands about one and a half tiles tall and will damage Mario if he comes in contact with any part of it. In the Super Mario World game style, Piranha Plants are replaced by Jumping Piranha Plants, which leap to a height of about three tiles every few seconds. In the Super Mario 3D World game style, Standard Piranha Plants will lunge at Mario every few seconds. A Piranha Plant can be defeated by every kind of attack method except jumping on its head. However, it can be defeated this way in the Super Mario 3D World game style. Jumping into its mouth is still a bad idea. In the Super Mario World and New Super Mario Bros. U game styles, Mario can spin jump on top of a piranha plant without taking damage. A piranha plant has one variant and three modifications. A fire piranha plant behaves like the standard variety but will spit a fireball in Mario's direction once every few seconds. A giant piranha plant is 3x2 tiles in size and behaves identically to the standard variety. A winged piranha plant leaps to a height of about 4 tiles, regardless of size, every few seconds, hovering in place for a moment before falling down to its original position. In the Super Mario World game style, winged jumping piranha plants will leap up to about 5 tiles. A parachuting piranha plant descends slowly toward the bottom of the screen, and resumes its basic behaviors when it lands. A piranha plant placed in a pipe will emerge from the pipe once every few seconds. Unlike other types of pipe spawning enemies, a pipe will not produce another piranha plant if the first one is defeated. This includes parachuting piranha plants as well. A fire piranha plant placed in a pipe will spit exactly one fireball with each emergence. A piranha plant placed in a bullet bill blaster is launched two and a half tiles forward at a medium speed, or about seven tiles at a high speed if from a red bullet bill blaster. Any kind of bullet bill blaster will only launch a single piranha plant at a time. It won't launch a second one unless the first one's defeated. A piranha plant in a Koopa clown car will pilot the vehicle towards Mario, and one in a Lakitu's cloud will pilot the cloud toward Mario on a horizontal plane. Water does not affect piranha plant behavior, and a piranha plant is defeated if it's submerged in lava or poison. Yoshi can eat and swallow piranha plants, but not big piranha plants. A piranha plant placed on a track will move at a medium speed, and a winged piranha plant will move at a very fast speed. A piranha plant placed one tile adjacent to certain terrain, and without certain terrain below it, will reorient itself and attach to that surface. Terrain that a piranha plant can attach to are ground blocks, spike blocks, question blocks, brick blocks, stone blocks, ice blocks, note blocks, pipes, and the edges of slopes. Giant and fire piranha plants are able to do this as well, but a winged or parachuting piranha plant will refuse to stick to these surfaces. A piranha plant also has a clear condition that involves defeating a certain amount of them in order to reach the goal. So, now that we know how it works, how do we work with it? Piranha plants may be relatively simple, but definitely have some unique use cases. They have embedded their roots into traditional levels, platforming levels, and even sprouted some interesting boss fights. Let's talk about that last one for a bit. While a giant sentient fire-spitting plant might seem terrifying by itself, Mario deals with these kinds of things on a daily basis. But, allo and behold, by stacking other enemies on top of one, we can create the Lovecraftian horror creature of Mario's nightmares into reality. In this example, Mario must survive an onslaught of fireballs until he's finally able to fire his own and dispose of the creature that has tormented him. Even if you didn't want to cause Mario lasting mental trauma, just by placing some fire piranha plants in the corners of your arena can up the stakes of whatever boss fight you decide to go with. 
As far as platforming levels go, piranha plants are excellent obstacles. When placed on blue platforms, they consistently pose a threat to Mario while he rides down the lift. They could also be given wings and create interesting time challenges. But, in my opinion, piranha plants grow best in traditional levels. This terrifying plant with teeth has been terrorizing Mario since the beginning of his run and jump career. That's because, in a game all about jumping on top of enemies' heads to defeat them, there's gotta be something that isn't as easily taken care of. So, planting these in your traditional levels seems like a no-brainer. Whether your level is based entirely around this shrewd shrub, or they're just used as occasional obstacles. All the various variations of this vegetation sows the seeds of several separate challenges. For example, filling this pit with piranha plants means that Mario must jump over it. However, a Koopa Troopa placed earlier in the level can lead to a fun moment where Mario kicks a shell into the pit, clearing a pathway and rewarding a 1-up. To nobody's surprise, piranha plants have an intimate relationship with pipes. Simply having a few piranha plant infested pipes in your course creates the dilemma of occasionally safe and occasionally hazardous terrain. While this isn't exactly a rule, I try to make pipes with piranha plants inside them stand out from pipes which are safe to land on, whether that's making them different colors or by placing coins on top of the safe ones. I also generally try to avoid making any pipe with a piranha plant a warp pipe, just so the player has an easier time figuring out which pipes could potentially lead to a secret area, and which are inhabited by demon spawn seedlings. And that's just the rhizome of this vulture verdure. If you're looking for more inspiration, check out another one of these item breakdowns, and you can help pick which item I do next by becoming a patron, YouTube member, or by being related to me. This one was for you, Jackson. See you in the next one.